The story's just beginning and I hope you have fun Whether the clouds have been rainy or you've played in the sun So come and gather round, sit yourself down It's time for a story with Rory Hello dear friends and welcome to Florida! And Fort Myers Beach, wow, what an amazing place to live. It is so, so beautiful here in Fort Myers Beach. So everyone who lives uh, on Fort Myers Beach, you guys are the luckiest people in the world. It's absolutely amazing. But I've got to tell you some funny stories that happened this week. I'm talking to you out of my lovely motel room. But one night last week, I actually stayed with Nathan, my, my friend, Nathan Shalevitz. Uh, now he lives in an apartment on the marina um, on Fort Myers Beach. And um, they were having trouble with a raccoon. So th th there's lots of raccoons around the neighborhood and they get into all the bins and so forth. And there are people who rent their their boats, their yachts, and, and they're moored up along the marina. And uh, they're all lovely folk, absolutely amazing people. In fact, one night we, um, we went there and um, we had a few drinks. In fact, uh, we were supposed to go out for dinner, but um, Nathan and I went onto one of the boats and they were having a little bit of a party. So we had a few drinks and we had quite a few tequilas. Now, I'm not really a big drinker and, and I haven't really had tequila before. So it was quite new and quite a bit getting used to, but um, I ended up about 10 o'clock coming round. I must have passed out completely. Um, everyone had gone, even Nathan had disappeared. Uh, my underpants, had been taken off and hoisted up the flagpole. So there were my pants flying in the breeze. So I was naked. And uh, I'd, I think I'd thrown up as well over the side. So um, that was <laughs> that was one night last week. But I stayed over at Nathan's apartment and um, they said the people were complaining about this, this raccoon. So he borrowed a, a, a cage, a great big raccoon cage from a neighbor next door, um, Coach. He, he was one of the, he's a basketball coach in, um, in Fort Myers, Coach Thimler. And um, he, he baited this, this trap. So before we went back to the apartment and had a few beers and slept over at his place, we baited this trap trap with some uh, cat food and we set it out and the next morning about 5 30 some some old biddies came around knocking on his door and said uh, Nathan come on you've got a raccoon luckily we tied the cage to the dock because <laughs> and the tide and the tide had gone down it was early in the morning the tide was out this huge cage with this massive fat raccoon in it was hanging over the side of the of the dock so obviously it'd been trying to get out smashing around and uh, we dragged it up and we untied it and you know we, did, we didn't let the raccoon out at all we were going to take it and um, release it in some some bush uh, off off the island but uh, it was pretty pretty mean and pretty pissed off actually so we put it in the shade um by the by his apartment and then we went off to um, the dockyard because, I'm, I, I'm, as I said last week, I'm going to help him um, as a crew member on, on the fishing boat. So we went down to the docks to uh, just get the supplies ready and get everything, get the ice on and get the food on and all the stuff we needed. And when we came back in the afternoon, <laughs> this is what we were greeted by. Um, of course, you've got to remember the sun moves and we'd forgotten about this. So we put the cage in the shade, but when we got back, the cage was no longer in the shade. So there was one incredibly annoyed raccoon that was hot and sweaty. And it was in the cage. But there was a little old lady sitting on a stool with a big floppy hat. And she was painting him. She had a little easel. And there she was painting <laughs> painting this raccoon. You know, because here she was up close to a, to a wild creature. But this raccoon was so angry. <laughs> Of course, she didn't, she didn't um, paint his teeth being bad, but um, I thought it was funny. And then we took the poor raccoon and we did release him and uh, he shot off into the bush, uh, pleased to get out of that cage, that hot cage. But um, yeah, so we'd uh, got supplies and uh, we filled the boat up. It was a big shrimp boat. Um, now the shrimp boats, they have a round hull. And if you've ever watched Forrest Gump, the movie Forrest Gump, you'll know what a shrimp boat is because it comes in with um, with his friend who's lost his legs and it's got those big stabilizers that come down and stop the boat from rocking. So that's a shrimp boat. But this this boat 
was not we weren't going for shrimp we were going to look for lobsters and um, and jewfish and snapper and grouper and so they'd taken the the, the, um, the stabilizers off now I'm not very good at sea I, I, and I didn't think I was going to bother me that much but holy moly it took us eight hours to get to where we were going to start fishing eight hours and we're out in the Gulf of Mexico and you know the Gulf most of the time is flat but it wasn't flat and I was absolutely sick so sick so miserable I sat on the back thinking the best thing to do is to jump off into the into the ocean so um, yeah it was absolutely dreadful and everyone was laughing at me and they were eating food they were eating hamburgers and you know and drinking um, you know soda pops and mm, it wasn't good eight hours eight hours of that but the weird thing is the next morning, I seemed to have my um, my sea legs, so everything was fine. So I was able to walk around the boat, and that had completely gone. Incredible. So we were catching um, dewfish. We had what's called bandits, which um, is a, 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 a fishing rod attached to the boat, and a line goes right down to the bottom, uh, to the seabed, and then they crank it up a little bit, and they've got these tin cans attached to it. So when the tin cans rattle, they press a button, and up comes these massive grouper, jewfish, great big snapper, huge snapper. You know, so we were catching these massive fish, bringing them up. But um, we were also sailing into, apparently, Cuban waters. Now, I don't know if that was legal or not, but um, we were taking the Cubans' lobster pots. This is what Nathan was telling me. He said it's not really what we're supposed to do, but the captain, um, a bit of a crook, a bit of a, a pirate, really, his name was... Um, Cecil, Cecil Jones. Um, we were sailing into these Cuban waters and we were taking all the lobster pots and taking all the lobsters. Those poor Cubans are going to find empty lobster pots. And I said, well, they're going to come after us with guns and shoot us. And he said, well, don't worry, you've got plenty of guns on the boat. And we did. We had loads of machine guns and pistols. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, this is not the thing I want to be doing. I don't want to be on a fishing boat 300 miles in the Gulf of Mexico being chased by Cuban fishermen. But we took the lobsters and we took the snapper and we took the grouper. And uh, it was pretty amazing out there. I mean, one night, one night, we put all the little fairy lights up on the boat, and I asked the captain, Cecil, I said, Cecil, why have we got all the lights up? And he said, um, well, basically, because we're in a shipping lane, which, again, was a bit of a surprise to me, because I didn't think we were going to be fishing in a fishing in a, in a shipping lane. Um, and, yeah, sure enough, because we weren't that far from Texas and Louisiana, there were massive, massive tankers. You know, they were a long way away, four or five miles away, but you could see them. And that night, oh, I had a nightmare. I had the worst dream I've had for a long time, where I thought this massive ship was just going to plow down into our little tiny 75-foot fishing boat and sink us. And I had my feet on the uh, on one of the, the hatches trying to open the hatch. And when I woke up, I had my feet wedged up against the ceiling um, where I was sleeping. So, hmm, a bit traumatic, that dream. But uh, we only had one night in the shipping lane. But it was pretty cool. I caught a pelican. I've caught, I caught a pelican on a fishing rod with a line. I put a sardine on the end of my line. I cast it out, not far, 20 meters or so. And a pelican was flying over and watched me do this, dive down and grab my bait. And I had a pelican on the end of my line. So I had to reel this pelican in. And we pulled this great big brown pelican up onto the boat and he wasn't happy. He was flapping around, flap, 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 flap. And we, we got the hook out of his throat, left a little tiny hole and off he flew and he didn't say thank you and he didn't turn around and say anything he just went off boom, 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 into the sunrise so uh, that was fun and we used to get these little tiny birds landing on the deck that were obviously migrating across the gulf of mexico and talking of birds flapping we had flying fish at night when in fact when we lit up that the boats because we were in the, the the shipping lane we had to light it all up all the fairy lights were all lit up you know i was out on the boats and all you could see was the light 10 feet around the boat, you know, the water was nice and green and beautiful, but pitch black. And then you'd hear this, boom, 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 and it was flying fish. I've never seen a flying fish before, but some of them were actually landing on, on the deck, which was pretty cool. Uh, I was throwing them back in the water and they'd swim back off. So it was, it was a pretty neat adventure. Oh, yeah, and something else. One day, we're out there, and the water's nice and calm, and we're just we're just fishing away with our with our rods. 
and everyone gets really excited. Everybody, there's there's the captain, um, there's his first mate, then there was Nathan, my buddy, and there was me and another chap we called Animal because he was a bit of an animal. But they got all excited, well, Nathan didn't, but the captain and the first mate did because floating out on the water was this great big massive bale. Now, I didn't know this, but some people were wearing these t-shirts these t with, a, with a bale and a fish's head on one end and a tail at the other. They were calling it square, square grouper. And I didn't know what square grouper was, but apparently it's drugs that are dumped over the side and they're floating in the ocean. And um, we went, the boat went right over to it and we hold it all in. We threw a grappling hook and pulled it in. A massive, great big bale. And I was thinking, I hope it's not drugs because I don't want to be on a boat that with, with drugs on board. You know, it's it's illegal and not, not a good thing. But luckily, it was only baking soda. So they, um, they, they smelt it, licked it, whatever, threw it back in the water and it floated off. And sure enough, another fishing boat, way, way, way in the distance, it went for, it made a beeline for that as well. So uh, thank goodness it wasn't drugs. So... Um, yeah, Mr. Cecil Jones, mm, got to keep an eye on you, mate. Taking those uh, poor Cubans lobsters and now looking for square grouper. Because of course, if you if you if you come ashore with um, with with drugs on your boat, it's um, it's a, an offence. So um, yeah, not not a good thing. But uh, we did catch lots of sh shrimp and uh, we caught lots of uh, grouper. And we eventually came back to shore. And um, it was weird because when I was when I'm in the shower. I'm rocking from side to side, and when I get out of bed and walk across the bedroom floor, everything I'm going from left to right, zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Oh, and another thing, <clears throat> um, Nathan was telling me um, the first the, the first mate, his name was um, was uh, Barry, I think Barry, um, was on parole. He'd had, he'd shot someone in in, um, in New Jersey, put six bullets into him, apparently in self defence, and here he was next to me, gutting fish. So. Um, yeah, Barry, um, not sure about that, but he was a nice chap. He really was a, a sweet fella, but um, yeah, you don't want to piss Barry off. So that was my fishing trip. Pretty cool, you know, um, and uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we're going up to uh, West Virginia because um, uh, in a few days, Nathan's getting married to that uh, to, his, to his girlfriend, Shoshana, Shoshana Campbell. So uh, we'll be doing that. So next week, I'm going to tell you all about the wedding. Um, up in uh, West Virginia. But for now, it's poetry time. Poetry time in Florida! This is called Take the Time. More often than not, we miss what's going on around us. If we take the time to sit and wait and watch the creatures that we take for granted, we get to glimpse into a world where we're so far removed from, a world that's just as challenging and eventful as our, as our own, yet simple and easy and only governed by the sun coming up and the sun going down. Sit upon the bank of a stream and river and you will see endless activity of daily life that exists in and on the water. Fish swimming to and fro in rhythm with deliberate purpose, ducks and waterfowl gliding by like people in an amusement park, drifting along on a ride that's exciting and fun, small furry creatures that scamper here and there and whose minds we'll never understand. Take the time to sit and watch and you will be rewarded with your own Mother Nature's reality show. Take the time. Yeah. There's my poem for this week. And so, it's time to say a tutela until uh, next week. So, stay safe. And um, I better tell you a joke, hadn't I? Um, what do you call a man with a sheep head? Ba ba. <laughs> oh, no. It's time to say a tutela. A tutela till next time. Cheerio! It's time to say goodbye, but there's no reason why Well, we can get together once again I hope you've had some fun hearing all the things I've done So let's all get together once again Now turn to the person standing near to you Give them a smile and a wave and say How do you do? How do you do? It's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry it's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry. It's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry. It's time to say goodbye, but there's no need to cry. It's time to say goodbye.